One of the bloodiest battles in the history of warfare, and certainly the Second World War was the Battle of Stalingrad. Fought between the 23rd of August 1942 and the 2nd of February 1943, it would see the destruction of the German Sixth Army and an estimated number of casualties of around 2 million. Today it is seen as one of the most significant turning points of World War II and as a battle that shifted the tide of war greatly against the Germans and the Nazis. No matter how much the Soviets would celebrate their victory at Stalingrad, it was a battle which did see immense horror and bloodshed. Join us today as we look at the horrors of Stalingrad, the bloodiest battle of World War II. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. But first a word from our sponsor Call of War. Call of War is a fantastic free online PvP strategy game set in the heart of the Second World War. You choose a real country to lead during the conflict and can fight up to 100 other players in real time in gripping games that can take weeks to complete. In Call of War you can use lots of different units and secret weapons to build up your army to ensure it is as strong as it can be. One of the most exciting parts of the game that I love is the ability to research different historical technological advancements and vehicles. You can deploy tanks, aircraft and even nuclear bombs to get the edge against your opponent. The choice is up to you on how you play Call of War. Do you go on the offensive and declare war on your neighbours to build up your empire, or do you build alliances with other players to solidify your nation's place in the world? There are a number of different strategies you can deploy also, which leads to incredible and engaging epic battles, and can see you try to take over the world. You can decide to flood the enemy ground with battalions of infantry soldiers, take the fight to coastal cities with a well-equipped navy, and also take the fight to your enemy's doorstep. Call of War World War is cross-platform too, and you can use the same account you have on PC on mobile, which means you can take the battlefield anywhere in the world. Also you get a brilliant exclusive gift. Using the link in the video description, you will get 13,000 gold and one month premium subscription free to help you build up your army and take the fight to your enemies. This offer is only available for 30 days, so don't miss out. I've created a special game for the first viewers to click the link and join me on the battlefield. At the start of 1942, the Wehrmacht had managed to capture large amounts of territory from the Soviet Union and had taken many countries such as Ukraine and much of the Balkans. The rest of the war for the Germans was also going well, with offensives in the Atlantic and Rommel's triumph capturing Tobruk. The German military were confident that they could break the Red Army and Stalin was expecting a huge summer offensive from the German army directed against Moscow. On the 23rd of July 1942, Hitler planned to expand the objectives of Operation Barbarossa, which included focusing on Stalingrad, a city which was named after the leader of the Soviet Union. Hitler expressed a desire to rain down terror onto Stalingrad, saying that all males were to be killed and all women and children deported to break the communist city. The Battle of Stalingrad itself was a huge melee centering around the city, and the battle can be split into four different phases. The first phase lasted from the 11th of July to the 23rd of August 1942, with the German 6th Army being commanded by General Paulus, advancing 200 kilometers to the east from the Shear River to the Volga. The second phase was the intense brutal urban battle that took place from the 23rd of August to the 18th of November. With this, for the first time in history, the battlefield wasn't on open fields and wasteland in which warring sides would try to pick the other off. The battlefield was a heavily industrialised city of Stalingrad. Now every street and every house and every part of the city was significant, with everything inside the city becoming integral to either winning or losing the battle. This is important for a number of reasons. Firstly, it was a major industrial city which could have played an important role in the war effort, especially situated on the Volga River could easily have taken Stalingrad, but the urban combat arena of the city worked in the favour of the Red Army. Before the Wehrmacht arrived at Stalingrad, the Luftwaffe had caused considerable damage in the Volga River area to allow supplies to the city to be greatly affected, and this caused chaos with Soviet shipping. Dozens of Soviet ships were sunk even before the battle began, with heavy bombing of the city it would also signal its attack. In the summer and autumn of 1942, over 1,000 tonnes of bombs were dropped, reducing the city to rubble damaging many factories and vital parts of the Soviet war effort, as well as killing many civilians. Some factories would continue with production, but Stalin would prevent civilians from leaving the city. Civilians were forced into building trenches and fortifications used for defence, 
but on the 23rd of August a huge German air raid would kill thousands once again, striking the buildings of the city, leaving Stalingrad even more of a ruin. The Soviet air force would do very little to protect the city, and anti-aircraft regiments would have nothing to compete with the Luftwaffe as they were poorly trained. Some groups would fight the advancing panzers and cause some great issue. Tanks were even for the Soviets driven straight out of the factories onto the battlefields, such was the desperation, many often had no sights, no paint and were often lacking other features such was the need for tanks. The Luftwaffe would continue to strike out against the Soviet tanks when attacks against the tank divisions were launched, with Stuckers causing havoc knocking out dozens of the vehicles, whilst Bf 109s would decimate Soviet aircraft. It got to the point within Stalingrad that the average soldier would live once he arrived in the city was less than 24 hours. For an officer of the Red Army, it would be around three days life expectancy, but Stalin would order his commanders and troops to not take a single step back. With every German advancement that came, more casualties on both sides would mount up. Bitter fighting took place in every street, every factory, every staircase of every house, and there were even few bodies exhumed after the battle would show the brutality when both the German and Soviet soldier stabbed each other to death simultaneously with their bayonets through the chests of one another. Combat would be so close that the enemy could hear the other breathe. It looked as if fighting could stumble on for months and years with no end in sight. The Germans would even bring in their 800mm railway gun named Dora who would bombard the city. Ruined buildings would become the Soviet defensive positions and Soviet snipers would use these buildings to pick off the Germans. They would inflict heavy casualties on them, with one sniper Vasily Zaitsev getting 242 confirmed kills during the epic battle of Stalingrad. The strain on both of the commanders was huge, Paulus would develop a tick in his eye and Choykov would break out in eczema. More Stuckers would attempt to inflict pain and submission on a daily basis, and in mid-October 1942, the Luftwaffe would again up its action. It flew dozens of hundreds of sorties, dropping bombs on the Soviets. At this time, the Soviet artillery on the eastern bank of the Volga River had been knocked out, and the 62nd Army had been cut into two. The Soviets were forced into a 1,000 square yard area of land on the west of the Volga bank, and Stuckers would fly over 1,000 sorties to knock out and pick off the soldiers. The Luftwaffe maintained aerial supremacy in early November, however its aircraft number had fallen by 40%. The bombing force of the German Air Force would be most heavily hit, however the raids by Soviet bombers would do very little against the Germans. Regiments of the Luftwaffe were eventually moved during the battle to deal with the American involvement in the war in Africa, and it would begin to be spread thin across the Soviet and German lines. In three months there had been immense carnage, slow progress and huge losses. The Germans reached the riverbanks of the Volga and captured around 90% of the city. This split the remaining Soviet defenders into narrow pockets. The ice on the river also prevented boats from supplying the Soviets and the battle looked ominous for them. However fighting would continue and in particular the heavy combat around a number of factories would become very famous. Factory workers would try to repair damaged tanks whilst the fighting would take place outside, and then they would simply just send the weapons straight out of the doors to deal with the threat metres away. The Germans during winter were poorly prepared for attacks. The Germans were stopped in Stalingrad initially by the resistance inside the city, but also the weather conditions. The Soviets had been planning to use deception that would trap and encircle the Sixth Army and the remaining German forces. During the siege of the city, the Axis force had asked for further support, for example the Hungarian 2nd Army were poorly trained and equipped, but were given the task of defending a 200km front north of the city. This resulted in a line which was thinly stretched, and there were gaps in the defensive lines. Hitler was obsessed with the need to take the city, and for this refused requests to provide further support to the flanks of Stalingrad. Concerns were expressed to the Führer, and it was said that if the situation was not sorted, then it would be a disaster. Hitler remained defiant admitting Stalingrad would be captured and held with the ardour of National Socialism. In the autumn the Soviets would keep a huge number of Soviet soldiers to the north and south of the city in the steppes. The German north flank was vulnerable 
been littered with these inexperienced soldiers. This weakness was noticed and known, and the Soviets exploited this. They preferred to face off against the non-German soldiers such as the Italians, Hungarians or Romanians based there to the north rather than facing the Germans inside the city. The plan was to keep the Germans pinned down within the walls of the city and punch through the poorly defended German flanks encircling and surrounding the Germans. This was a masterstroke and was codenamed Operation Uranus. On the 19th of November the plan was put into place. The attacking Soviet unions consisted of three complete armies, including 18 infantry divisions, two motorised brigades, eight tank brigades, six cavalry divisions and much more. The preparations for the attack were made, but the thinly spread out Romanian 3rd Army protecting the northern flank of the German army were battered. The Soviets stormed through the lines, and a day later an offensive was launched also to the south of Stalingrad. The Romanian forces holding these lines also crumbled, and the groups raced west in a pincer movement meeting two days later. Because of this pincer movement, around 230,000 German and Romanian soldiers, along with other Axis forces, found themselves trapped. In this pocket were also Soviet civilians and soldiers captured during the battle. 50,000 soldiers of the German 6th Army were stationed outside, but quickly the Soviets set up defensive formations against any breakout attempt. German army chiefs would ask for a breakout to a new line west of the River Don, but Hermann Goering, the head of the Luftwaffe, persuaded generals that the Luftwaffe could supply the 6th Army with an air bridge, allowing Germans to fight on inside the city as the relief forces gathered. It was agreed that the 6th Army would be supplied by air, however the mission failed. Terrible weather conditions combined with failing aircraft, heavy anti-aircraft fire and intercepting aircraft led to the loss of almost 500 German planes. Those planes which would get through would often arrive with the wrong equipment, one for example arriving with 20 tonnes of vodka and summer uniforms in the middle of winter. With this the German soldiers were exposed and their food rations began to dwindle. Sick and wounded men sometimes were evacuated but the sick army slowly starved to death. Pilots arrived finding the soldiers who were too emaciated to even unload the aircraft and with this slim rations were given out. As the Soviets consolidated their positions around the city, fierce fighting began to minimise the pocket. The Germans attempted Operation Winter Storm to try and relieve the army from the south and this was battered away by the Soviets in December 1942. It was with this that the real harsh Russian winter set in. The Volga River froze over, allowing the Soviets to supply their troops easier, simply crossing over the icy river. The Germans who were isolated and trapped now ran out of fuel to provide heat as well as medicines. With this thousands died from malnutrition, disease and frostbite. The scenes of corpses lying at the sides of the roads in the snow were common for the German army around the city. The Red Army would then launch Operation Saturn to smash through the enemy on the Don and to take Rostov. This would have then trapped the remaining army group south which amounted to one third of all German soldiers in Russia and the area. At this time the Sixth Army was now beyond help. The German troops in Stalingrad were told that help would come in the form of reinforcements and many generals would try to force General Paulus to defy Hitler's orders and to attempt to break out. Paulus would refuse this but by this time the Sixth Army was in a dire situation with little fuel and much suffering in the harsh winter. The Germans inside the pocket would fall back to the city of Stalingrad itself, losing airfields which greatly hindered supplies. The Germans were also now running out of not just food but ammunition and would attempt to continue to resist, however they believed they would just fight to the death as the Soviets they thought would execute anyone who surrendered. Inside of the city, bloody street to street urban warfare began again, with the Germans being pushed back now to the Volga River. The Germans would attempt to do anything to survive, protecting themselves from grenades by putting wire nets over windows and things were desperate. They had no tanks inside of the city and with this a generous surrender offer was made to German Field Marshal to have been taken prisoner at the time. Hitler believed he would die fighting or take his own life and then the Soviets would capture more soldiers. To their surprise and happiness, the German forces that remained would surrender inside the city on February the 2nd 1943. 
91,000 starving or ill Germans were taken prisoner, along with a number of generals. Some forces did try to continue the fight, hiding in cellars or the sewers, attempting to resist and pick off soldiers, but the Soviets would clear the city of any more resistance. Only 5,000 of the 91,000 captured at Stalingrad and taken as prisoners of war would return home to Germany. Many were sent to hard labour camps over in the Soviet Union, dying of malnutrition and overwork. The scene inside the city was described as horror. It was said, In the porch lay a skeleton of a horse with only a few scraps of meat clinging to its ribs. Here lay more skeletons, and there there was an enormous cesspool frozen solid. There were 200 Germans dying of frostbite and hunger. At the end of the war behind the cesspool, behind a low wall, was the yellow corpses of skinny German soldiers piled up. The Battle of Stalingrad would be one of the largest battles ever to take place in history, lasting almost 200 days. The numbers of casualties are hard to calculate, so was the vastness of the battle, and it was the battle that saw a huge shift in the outcome of the Second World War. Different historians have calculated the total losses as being huge. It was said that the Axis suffered around 850,000 casualties, 400,000 Germans, 200,000 Romanians, 130,000 Italians and 120,000 Hungarians. In the whole area of Stalingrad and the surrounding battles, it's believed by some historians that the Axis suffered around 1 million casualties. According to records, the Red Army would suffer over 1.1 million casualties. In total, the battle would result in around 2 million dead or injured or missing. The German public would not be told of the disaster of Stalingrad until the end of January 1943, and it marked the first time that the Nazis acknowledged the defeat in their war effort. Stalingrad acted as a turning point for the war on the Eastern Front, and many believe it was a turning point of the Second World War as a whole. The German Sixth Army also ceased to exist, and the forces of the German Allies had been devastated. Hitler would take responsibility himself for the defeat later in 1944, and with the defeat of Stalingrad, people believe Hitler was on a downward slope with his Third Reich. Ultimately though, the Battle of Stalingrad saw a total of around 2 million casualties, and it's clear that Stalin and Hitler saw the huge importance of the battle and the city. Hitler's stern determination, coupled with Stalin's, would lead to a huge amount of deaths, and for the Third Reich a huge amount of shame, as their defeat was ushered in with the brutality of the Soviet army. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.